<laughs> Andrew McCart, IFL TV, probably sponsored by Everlast. Delighted as always to be joined by my good friend Gary Cully. Gary, it's been a while, my man. How's things? I know you're out in Galway in a hotel, getting a wee break away, man. So how are you enjoying it? Yeah, man, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I came down to Galway. Obviously, I knew this fight of mine was getting announced today. So it's eight weeks. So uh, training was going really well. I'm I'm pushing new uh, new PBs and stuff in the gym. So I said I'd come down to Galway and uh, take a couple of days, go take two days off, go to the Christmas markets, just switch off with the missus. But uh, yeah, this was just just as I answered the phone, to you there, I'm coming out of the gym for my second session. So um, it yeah. wasn't much of a of a switch off, but like it's good to just get away and yeah, find you the could train. Turn the phone. Could you switch it just a little bit better for the. If you, if you turn your phone that way, the last Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's, that's better. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, man. I should have really done that. But I should have really done that before the interview. But anyway, we're on cut. We're raw on IFL TV, as they say. Yeah, so you're raw and on. But <laughs> <cool, yeah. laughs> uh, you, you, you've took a break for to think, but you obviously you eight weeks to go. You'll be in, you'll be entering camp with Pete Taylor very shortly. Yeah, man. Um, I'll start camp probably next week. I'll wait till Christmas Day. I think leaves me seven weeks out. So. Um, from from Boxing Day, you was call it Stevens Day in Ireland. Um, yeah. I'll be in the camp for seven hard weeks. But like I said, I was like, like I'm ready to fight next week, you know. So that's why I'm that's why I'm kind of down here to to switch off a little bit because I was pushing and pushing and uh, I didn't want to overtrain and hit a wall. So I came down here to, to switch off so I can I can kind of drop a little bit so I can push on again and go really really hard for the next seven weeks. I want this to be the best performance of my career so far. I think I have a point to prove. Um, there's been lot, lots of lightweight fights, lots of uh, light, lightweight action going on recently. So um, I want to get myself in the mix. So I think this is this is the time to to show people where I'm at, you know? Well, that will definitely come on to that, Gary. But let's talk about your opponent on February 11th. Um, I don't know his first name. I've only got his, his surname here, Ram Labs. He's four. Artem. Art- Ram Labs. Oh, there you go. See, I knew you would know, man. That's, that's unprofessional for me, but... Uh, I'm just I'm just going from what the poster says on it's not an open open box right yet. So what the poster says on MTK Ram Labs. I've I've, I've tried to look him down. There's a couple of names on on box rec. I think the one that we're talking about is obviously the lightweight one. He's 14 and yeah. one, I believe. He went uh, his only loss was to Archie Sharp, who took him the distance. Um, yeah, a good fight. So a tough opponent for yourself. Yeah, look, like it it is a from what I know of him, he's a, he's a really good uh, really good opponent. He's won 13, 14 fights out in Lafayette, and then. Came over, fought Archie Sharp, um, took Archie the distance. Now look, I think Archie had a really off night. Um, got got the points win. It was a wide enough points win. Mm-hmm. Um, but from what I know of him, he, he's a really good. He's he's technically well rounded. He fought. Uh, he actually fought Josh Taylor in the amateurs. He's mm-hmm. a he's dual amateur. He fought Josh. He fought Joe Cordina. Um, he's fought he's fought big names in the amateurs, and then. Yeah, he's he's seems to be a, a bit of a star in Latvia and um he came over then and, and fought Archie Sharp. I think Archie had an off night and, and still got the points win. But look, like I said, I've a point to prove. I'm I'm uh, looking to get in the mix in, in the lightweight division next year. I'm a big lightweight. Um all I will say is he's not fighting Archie Sharp this time around. You know, Archie's a Archie's a really good fighter, but he's not fighting Archie Sharp this time around. Archie did have him down though in the middle rounds, if I remember. Yes, he did have him down. And yeah. did, again, he did go the distance with them. So I keep saying this with you. You're talking about the big fights in the lightweight division in 2022 being your year. So to kickstart this year in February, to kickstart 2022, are we looking at a statement? Are we looking at possibly going in there and getting this guy out of here quick in a, in a sensational fashion, maybe a knockout stoppage, if not in a clinical points decision? Yeah, look, I'd like to blast him out in the first round, to be honest with you. Um, and that's what I will go in there to do is blast him out in the first round. But not in a way which we seen Lopez do with uh, with uh, with Cambosa the other week, where that was plan A and there was no plan B, C, and D. Like I, I will go in there, I'll start fast, I'll go into fight, and I'll go into to get him out of there early if that's possible. But look, I'm conditioned now to do ten rounds, so give me eight weeks of pushing boundaries in the gym. Um, I'm going to reach new levels in the gym. I'm going to be ready to go. I fight at quite a high pace and I'm going to be ready to do that for 10 rounds. Um, if I don't get him out there early, look, I'll settle into the fight and um, 
yeah, we'll we'll win on a wide points win if he's tough and if he can stay in there. And possibly I would I would probably like that more. Um, obviously the knockouts are great. Um, look, we all love getting in there and getting getting the getting the job done early. But look, I probably need a little bit of experience and and to go through the rounds before I step up the level. So, yeah, and um, that's why we picked this guy. I think he's tough. He can he can bring me rounds. He's coming to win, which is a uh, which is a, a big thing for me. I always wanted to, to fight people that are coming coming to the ring to win. So, um, yeah, he's coming to take this title off me. And um, make no mistake about it, I have to be 100%. If I'm anything less than 100%, I'll be found out and this guy will take the title home. So, um, my plan is to be the best that I, I have been so far. And, um, yeah, possibly get him out there early or possibly do a, do a wide points win. But once I win, I win. WBO European Championship belt, that's what you hold right now, and that's the one you're defending. You're obviously highly ranked with the WBO, and you mentioned the big fights, and you, what's that? And the Irish title. And, oh, the Irish title. I mean, I know that, I know that, but you're not defending that one, are you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's still a champ, still exactly, mate. Keep, keep rattling off the accolades. Um, yes. Uh, aye, so you're highly ranked with the WBO, you're talking about these big fights, and you were on Twitter saying 2022 is my year. You were vocal about the Lopez Cambosis fight. I'm guessing you watched Devin Haney. You've spoken about Devin Haney before, how you would like that fight. It's the, the landscape in the lightweight division right now is changing all the time. Lomachenko was all, you wouldn't say he was the forgotten man, but after the Richard Comey fight, everyone's been like, oh, Lomachenko. You know what it was? Because even, even when I was talking to people after the Lopez fight, like I mentioned, oh yeah, there's there's Lopez, there's uh, Haney, there's Garcia, and there's Tank, and you, you just kind of forget about Loma, like, but... He's he's one of the top guys still in the division for sure. What do you make of the Lopez Cambosis fight? Were you surprised at the fight? I know many people had Lopez to win, but what were your thoughts on the fight? Like I had Lopez to win, I won't lie, but somebody actually sent me a, a, a betting slip that earlier on that day. One of my mates sent me a betting slip and said, "I'm going to back Cambosis." What do you think? He didn't really. He's just a just a boxing fan, likes watching the boxing. And uh, I said, "Look, I, I'm I'm." I, if I was putting money on it, I'd put it on Lopez, but I won't be. There's not. There's obviously no value for money in the in the bookies for for Lopez. So I said, uh, if Cambosis wins, I won't be surprised. He has to. He has to have the fight of his life to win. But I, I won't be surprised if he gets in and does it. Um, like Lopez was impressive going through Comey and maybe a fight or two before that, and then obviously beating Loma. But I don't think we've seen him when somebody kind of gave it back to him. Um, because he he blasted Comey out, didn't he? And he kind of bullied Loma and was able to bully Loma because of the size. But um, Combosa was coming in to to win and to put the to bring the fight to Lopez. And I don't think we really seen anybody do that to him so far in his career. And uh, Combosa did it really really well. What a performance! He's uh, he's one of the top guys in the division for sure. That was no fluke. He's he's a really skillful, really talented guy. What do you make of the corner work from Lopez's team, his dad and stuff like that during the fight? Yeah, like his dad's a bit a little bit deluded. I think he I think if if he wants to if he wants to he's obviously gonna move up to 140 now, but if he wants to kind of challenge and win titles again, he needs to rethink. Um obviously his his skill and his talent is is there's no question that that's there, but at the elite level if he's in there with, with the likes of a, a Josh Taylor or they're saying they're talking about 147 at Crawford and you have somebody giving you advice like that in the corner, like it just it's just not going to work. I don't want to say too much about his father. It's his father at the end of the day. and mm. uh, he, He's been his coach all his life and he obviously has massive trust in him. But uh, like that was that was very amateur, very, uh, very silly corner work skills on, on that night. Now, I haven't seen him before that in previous fights, whether he has been good in the past, but... Uh, yeah, his performance that night was really, really bad. Going, to, uh, you we spoke about Devin Haney and how you won that fight. He obviously beat Jojo Diaz, and you again I thought, a couple of weeks after that was Lomachenko. You like, did think he was the. I don't know why people thought he was the forgotten man. Like when, when you do talk about the, the lightweight division, you were talking about Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, Tank Davis, Lopez, maybe even Cambosis, but and then people, oh yeah, 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 uh, Lomachenko's still there. I mean, yeah, yeah. And obviously, he th- what a performance from him against Wakami the other week. I think he was um, over the the last couple of weeks that we've seen. Obviously, uh, obviously, Cambosa against Lopez to come and take all the belts was a massive statement and had to be a huge performance. But 
Boxing wise, I think Loma was most impressive. If you want to look at technique and skill and and uh, how he navigated the ring and and what he did in there, I think Loma was most impressive. Um, he just he just looks like he's he's doing it with ease. He's it's mm. effortless to him. You know, he's he's uh, he's the top, he's he's number one, probably the the hardest fight in the division. I would say for sure. We're talking about obviously the the national guy, the international guys in Lomachenko and Devin Haney's and stuff like that. But I know you want to fight Devin Haney, and you said that you would, you feel comfortable. I want to fight any of them, Andy, not Devin Haney. Like he's he's just one of the big names, you know. There's there's Tank Ryan Garcia. Give me Ryan Garcia in the morning. Um, I want to fight all the all these guys. Do Ryan Garcia if you fought him. Say again. What would you do to Ryan Garcia if you if you fought him right now? I think I'd knock him out. <laughs> well. He's explosive. He's probably got the quickest left hook that I've ever seen. Um, so he's dangerous, and he he brings his own. Uh, he brings his game to the table, and it's really good. It's really impressive. Um, but I do think he's vulnerable. I think I, I think I could knock him out. I think he's a uh, he's a little bit vulnerable. He can be hurt, and I think I could knock him out with the right game plan. But again, like I said. It's one of these fights at the top level. You make one mistake, you're on the arse yourself. You're pl- you're planning on putting this guy down, make one mistake, and and you find yourself on the floor. So, uh, yeah, I think I think I can be any of the guys at, at the at the top of the division. But like I said, it has to be the performance of your life to beat them because you can't make much mistakes against these guys. That being said, like I said, to you, we're talking about the guys overseas and stuff like that. Here in in the island in the UK. You've still got guys like James Tennyson. Now, Maxi Hughes, I believe you were due to fight back to you, excuse me, at some stage. Yeah. And uh, he's now the IBO world champion. You know, again, probably an easier fight to make for you if all going well, mid-2022. Does that interest you, old Maxi? That's not an easy fight to make. You're mad. Is it not? If it was easier, than made by now, you know? Like, uh, I take that fight all day long, but it's a dangerous fight for Maxi. Probably, he done all his hard work. He done the he done the hard groundwork. He had three big wins in the throughout throughout the COVID lockdowns, and then had his big fight with Strafon and beat Strafon for the IBO. So it'd be a big risk for him to to take me. I think um, when I'm coming up, coming through the ranks with the WBO, I think he kind of wants somebody who's already. Who's already up there? Um, he's looking ahead of himself rather than probably what he thinks is looking looking down towards me as I I haven't uh, really got to to that level yet. But look, like I said, I accepted that fight back in 2019. It was due to happen early 2020 before COVID. Uh, Maxi pulled out of that fight for whatever reason. I think an injury or something. Um, and then went on. Like I said, he had a really good run. Um. I was actually a fan of him throughout lockdown for for the for the big wins and the big performance he was putting in, and you have to respect him for it. He's changed his life, you know. Does so it, doesn't he? Yeah, a hundred percent he does. hundred percent. So fair play to him. He seems like a nice fella, but like I said, I take that fight all day long. Um, for the simple reason he's got an IBO belt. He's he's had a couple of big big wins, and uh, he was the name on everybody's lips for a while. So I kind of wanted to to end the Cinderella story, but. And get my name to, to where his was at for a bit. But look, um, whatever fight presents itself, I'm I'm happy. I'm happy wherever. I, I know, like I'm, we're talking about the likes of the Cambosas and stuff like that now. But I said on on in an interview with Irishboxing.com, I'm, I understand the game enough to to know I'm not in the position to be calling the likes of his name yet. You know, I, obviously I believe that my skill is uh, I have enough to beat him, but um, I haven't proved enough in the ring to to be able to go and call all these guys out just yet. So, yeah, whatever fight presents itself, I'm happy with I'm happy with a Maxi Hughes fight. I'm happy with a Strafon fight, maybe, um, in 2022 sometime. Let me pitch something to you then. Yeah, yeah. A good friend of mine, a countryman of mine, returned to the ring after two years out, campaigning at Lightweight, yeah, yeah. Ricky Burns. Uh, looked, looked good for two years out the ring, at 38 years old. Uh, he told me that he'll stop boxing when he feels, he doesn't feel like he's, he's ready to retire. Um, yeah, boxed a tough opponent that dropped uh, Sean McComb and that Dominguez. I don't know if you remember. I think you were on the card in Belfast, maybe. Yeah, I, I actually was looking up the guy. I didn't remember the guy who he was, but now I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So Ricky outpointed them massively. So he still looks good. 
three weight world champion. You're saying you haven't beat that name. You're not at that, that record yet. But fighting somebody like Ricky Barnes, who's been there, done it, three weight world champion, that will certainly put you up there. For sure, hundred percent. They're the they're the type of names that that I want to be fighting this year. Um, Ricky Burns is a massive name in the UK and and uh, in Scotland and in Ireland. People know him as well. You know he's three weight world champion. That's not to be uh, that's not to be frowned at all. So I actually only checked the other day. Me and you have spoke about this fight off camera before. Yes. Um, I actually only checked the other day when when the pro bell and weighing results went up because I wasn't sure if he was fighting at one three five or one forty, but. He seems like he's down at one three five, and possibly that could be a fight that that's um that's there. Um, like I said, I want to get February eleven out of the way, and I'm happy with with any fight that presents itself to put me in uh, in pole position for world titles. Um, the likes of these big names, Ricky Burns, probably definitely a, a bigger name than Maxi Hughes, but like these types of guys, Maxi Hughes is, um is a big name in Britain. Ricky Burns, big name in Britain. We were chatting about Lee Selby the other week. He's got um he's getting an IBF eliminator now, so he's obviously going to try and get that and get back in mandatory position for Cambosa. So it's fun, boxing's a funny game. Like he's just lost on a split decision to him, and now he could possibly be mandatory to fight for all the belts again. So um these type of names, the big the biggest names. The lightweight division was <clears throat> it's probably the best division right now in terms of talent. Yeah, man, it's 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 so exciting to be a part of as well when you see. You see the rankings coming out. I'm obviously moved into nine in the WBO and twelve in the WBA, but like just looking, looking even above and even below, and just seeing the names and and the records, and it's a stacked division. It's uh, like even we're talking about, we're only talking about across Britain and and the UK there, um, with the likes of Burns, Selby, Max Hughes, James Tennyson, myself, like. That alone is a uh, is is exciting to be a part of. Let alone the world level where you have the Garcias, the Tanks, the the Haney's, Cambosas. So, um, yeah, man, it's fucking it's exciting times. Definitely, but you mentioned there you want to get February eleventh out the way. So, when can what can the fans expect from you? You said an explosive performance, but it'll be a calculated performance as well. Yeah, of course, I want it to be my best performance. Um, like nobody's seen me go through the gears yet. You probably see me in second gear with like getting into the ring and, and starting fast with the with the likes of uh Fitzpatrick, Katochikov, Simeon. Um I obviously got in with uh went the eight rounds with, with Craig Craig Woodruff, but I don't think I really went through the gears in that fight. Um had a bit going on, like I said, I had, I had a couple of problems in, in the couple of weeks before the fight, so preparations weren't ideal for that. Um but the, the the mission there was just get in and get the job done. And I had to just grit down on the gum shield and get the job done. And that's what I did. I came through hardship of being knocked down and um still won on what I thought was a wide points victory. Look, I'm I'm uh, I'm 13 fights into my career and I believe I've only lost one round, um, which is when I was dropped against Craig Woodruff. So that has to be a 10-8 round, but I believe probably 30 seconds of that round I lost was the, was the 10 seconds in which, eight seconds in which I was down and uh, to 20 seconds after that where I had to hold on a bit to get my to get my bearings back. But won mm. the rest of the round, won the whole round before that. So I don't I don't think I've uh, I've I've really lost a round in my professional career. So when the challenge is put to me and I start going through the gears a little bit more, um people haven't haven't seen that side of me yet and and to be able to settle into a fight over over six rounds, seven rounds, eight rounds, going through 10, 11, 12. Like, I'm looking forward to to them rounds um, to show people what I'm really about. And you'll need that big name. Finally, guys, before I let you go and enjoy Galway, I know you're there with your, your missus as well, so um, thank you so much for your time. But this time next year, course, if, we have, if we have this interview this time next year, in 2022, same time, same place, me and you, what would you like? To, where would you like to be? What would you like to have around your waist? Who would you like to have like to have fought? Where would you like to be? I'd like to fight four times next year. Um, I obviously had the the hand injury going back to 20, 2019, I think that kept me out for six months, and um, I picked up. I was supposed to fight in in November, so um, I picked up a little injury before that, which kept me out as well. So that's both probably kept me out 
mm. six months out of the ring each time. So it's it's probably I've probably missed a year of my career. I'm 26 after um after Christmas. So I just want to start pushing on and going for it now. Um, I'm obviously I'm in a good position. I'm 13 and 0. Uh, whole WBO European and the Irish title, but I'd like to pick up a couple more ranking belts. Like I said, I'm in. I'm number nine at the WBO now, and I'm 12 at the WBA. So I'd like to be possibly top five at both of them next year. This time next year, and maybe into another one, the WBC or the IBF, the WBA. Sorry, I said I'm in the WBA. Um. So yeah, back into into the top ten with another one and top five in in the two I'm with now. So. I'd like to be pushing to to be in contention for a world title shot this time next year. Five, four times, um, February, maybe April, May. Then the big failure show in August, hopefully get a big fight in that. And then possibly tail end of the year again, November, December. So four wins, um, four exciting fights, 17 and now and ready to win a world title then in early 2023. Gary, listen, I don't think I'll be at your call that's... Uh... Umar Coogan, Oscar territory, Raza territory. So I probably won't, this is probably one of the first fights. The good I'll, lads. Yeah, the, 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 the better lads probably. You're the more talented. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But listen, enjoy the rest of your time in Galway. Enjoy Christmas. Have a great new year. And uh, if I don't speak to you before February 11th, mate, enjoy it, smash it, and I'll speak to you after. Thank you very much, pal. You don't drink too much brandy over the Christmas now, yeah? Mate, yeah, just the one, right? Yeah, you can have one for me as well. So there's two, yeah. I'll two. I'll take yours as well. Of course. I'm <laughs> you guys, you stay training, you stay fit. And uh, listen, good luck for 2022 and hope they'll catch up with you soon, brother. Thank you, pal. Appreciate your time, yeah. Cheers, man. Cheers, Gary. Bye now. Nice one, man. Bye-bye.